Prima Media's Mining Weekly is speaking to Kula Kwashi Ndlakula, the Executive Director of SADAC's Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. It is known as SACRI. Kuda, could we chat about what role SACRI is playing in securing green hydrogen? I'll start off by introducing SACRI. Uh, SACRI stands for the SADAC Center for Renewable Energy and Energy Efficiency. Uh, it was established in 2015 by the SADAC ministers responsible for energy. It was given a mandate to promote renewable energy and energy efficiency uh, as a way to address energy access and energy security. So you realize that we have two challenges that um, um, hampering the development, especially for the energy sector. Uh, these two challenges are primarily energy access and energy security. With the immense potential of renewable energy that we have as a region, uh, renewable energy can play a big role in terms of addressing energy security as well as energy access. And we see that uh, green hydrogen can play a significant role, not only to address energy security and energy access, but it can also play a big role in terms of um, industrialization of the region. If you look at our business plan, uh, we've, we, we, we had a, a business plan that was adopted in uh, 2019, at the end of 2019. One of the key pillars of the, our business plan, which is a five-year strategic plan, uh, looks at uh, industrialization, supporting the regional industrialization. So we see uh, green hydrogen playing a part towards the industrialization of the region. As a region, we are a net importer of energy resources. We are importing um, petroleum products, uh, mostly to drive uh, our vehicle, our vehicles. We also look at, if you look at it, also if you are uh, in industries, some of the mining companies are using HFO, heavy fuel oil uh, uh, for process heat. Applies also, it's, the same applies to other industrial applications. For, for example, if you look at fertilizer, the fertilizer manufacturing industry, we're importing a lot of uh, ammonia, uh, but this then uh, we can see a substitution coming in uh, with the utilization of uh, green hydrogen. So with green hydrogen, we're looking at the source of electricity being renewable electricity. So in this case, we're looking at wind, solar, and other electricity, um, and other, other renewable energy resources to, to, to that, that can be used to generate electricity and then uh, uh, split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And what water would you use? Water is a challenge. We know that um, quite a number of countries are water stressed. Uh, if you look at countries like South Africa, um, Namibia, Botswana, these are water stressed countries. Of course, if you look at the whole region, uh, there are some countries that have some abundance of water if you look at Zambia, uh, DRC, Congo, I um, mean, you look at uh, uh, some parts of Zimbabwe as well, as well as Malawi. But look, again, overall, the region is water stressed. British water is a good source uh, for water for um, electrolysis. Uh, for example, already um, Saudi Arabia, Morocco, they are driving and pushing hard for green hydrogen. And definitely they're going to use seawater for that. So the advantage also is that I think we can also see another industry coming up, which is an industry where we are going to be um, using seawater, um, process the seawater. We get, of course, hydrogen, oxygen, but also we can have that water that is utilized also uh, for as fresh water, as potable water. So there is that opportunity as well arising out of um, utilization of Brinkish and seawater. Now, Southern Africa, our region, is the host of the biggest endowment of platinum group metals. Between South Africa and Zimbabwe, we host more than clo or close to 90% of the platinum group metals. Can we sort of link these platinum group metals to this green hydrogen 
what role could the platinum group metals play in generating green hydrogen? Indeed, um, if you look at um, the process itself uh, of um, electrolyzers, uh, it uses some, some metals uh, and some minerals that can be utilized to make electrolyzers. Um, as you said, with platinum, with uh, cobalt in Congo and other minerals. But also another step, going a step forward as well, is uh, uh, if you look at uh, fuel cells, uh, fuel cells, uh, bulk of materials that are used, uh, some of the materials that you mentioned, including manganese that we are producing here. So I, I, I see a lot of beneficiation coming out uh, once we have created that, um, uh, once we have analyzed and, 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 uh, and, 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 pro and looked at what competence as a region we have and how we can add value. So what we've done also is SACRE and SASCA is that we have established a technical committee that is supposed to, that is going to, that is advising us actually, as we speak on uh, green hydrogen. And the composition of this technical committee is, is made up of uh, experts across the region. We look at economists, we have got uh, legal minds. We also have environmentalists. We have um, uh, some experts that, are, that have done a lot in terms of industrialization. Some of them have supported the development of the SADC industrialization agenda. So they have a good understanding of what is required. So we've brought them in to assist us to understand the value chains and how we can benefit as a region from the resources that we have. And we believe green hydrogen is one of the sectors that can benefit the region in terms of value addition. And you have got convening powers for, for the region. How many countries are involved there? And is there buy-in into this green hydrogen concept? Indeed, uh, as you said, yes, we, we do have convening powers as a SADC regional center. Uh, what we've done is actually, we've got 12 countries that we are actively working on um, in terms of the development of the hydrogen atlas. And uh, we have already established national teams in, in all these countries. And these national teams, as we speak, they're very active on the ground. Um, uh, on daily basis, we are getting uh, information, feedback with meetings that they are holding with uh, national stakeholders. And um, it's, to our surprise, actually, is that the buy-in that we got is, uh, is even beyond, it's beyond our expectation. Uh, it seems like in some countries, they are telling us that we are far behind in terms of um, uh, taking action uh, because they, as they are reading and um, getting engaged, they are inundated also with private sector players that are coming in, some of them wanting to sign MOUs, some of them requesting um, some um, guidance on how they can uh, start developing this sector. So I think, yes, we have come at the right moment. Um, and uh, the buy-in from uh, stakeholders, especially the government, is so huge. I tell you, some of the countries are even now considering developing roadmaps. They've even asked us on some guidelines on how they can start developing green hydrogen roadmaps, which is what some countries have done in Europe, Australia, and other places. What is the timeline on this? When are we going to know where the, the best generation of sun power can take place in the region, where the wind corridors are the most powerful? When are we going to know all these facts and figures that will be the important starting point for some sort of pilot plant? Establishment of um, uh, power plants, and renewable energy power plants, uh, in our view, it's something that can happen in the shortest period of time. A solar farm can be established in 12, uh, 12 months, uh, 18 months. If then you, you look at um, the establishment of the green hydrogen facilities, uh, if you can take a cue from uh, what is happening, let's say in Saudi Arabia, there's just a deal that was signed between um, Aqua Power and um, the Saudi government. I think they've put in a projection of about five years to establish and, and, and get to the stage where hydrogen is produced and, and, and especially in Saudi Arabia is targeting the export market. So they are looking at uh, a period of about five years that they can see 
a substantial amount of uh, hydrogen being produced. And are we just looking at domestic consumption of green hydrogen or are we looking to export? We need to look at both. We're a net importer of energy resources. So we need to substitute those imports. It's, 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 I think it's, it's, it's a must and uh, so that we, we stop the bleeding of, of, of foreign currents. But also at the same time, um, besides stopping the imports, we need to also strengthen, as we mentioned, the value chains so that we can create jobs, uh, we can uh, become industrialized. You know, SADAC has got an industrialization agenda. By 2063, we should be industrialized as a region. For us to end foreign currents, we need to export. We are already in discussion as SACRI, we are already in discussion with one of the European uh, leaders uh, of um, port hubs uh, who would want to come in and assist also the region to develop our ports and make them ready for exporting of gas. We need to start working on um, safety rules, guidelines, safety measures that need to be put in place. And uh, it, this, in my view, should be a priority as we uh, start developing the hydrogen market. The green hydrogen economy, in our view, is going to be a game changer. We see a lot of value in a region developing the green hydrogen economy. So we expect that um, by the end of uh, 2021, we should have a validated hydrogen atlas uh, that identifies the potentials, that identifies uh, requirements in terms of infrastructure that needs to be developed. It is on that basis that additional, um, additional aspects of the, green economy, of the green hydrogen economy can be developed. For instance, um, the siting of uh, infrastructure, uh, electro ele electrolysis plants, uh, the industries that can benefit from green hydrogen, the networks that need to be developed, um, as well as policies, regulations that need to come, come in handy to support the green hydrogen economy. There is a great potential. There is a great will. As SADAC, um, we work with all the 16 member countries. Of course, there could be pilot projects. There could be piloting in one or two countries, or currently we are working with 12 countries uh, where we are piloting. But the benefits, and the, the, the benefits have to stretch to all the 16 countries of SADAC. That was Kula Kwashi and Lakula speaking to Mining Weekly about the potential of developing a green hydrogen economy in the Southern African region.